A remaster is really more of a tech art endeavor. This was remade from the ground up. No matter what we were making, it was going to be compared not to the original, it was going to be compared to the memory of the original. It became pretty clear that this is going to require more than just like a remastering approach. We really want to recreate this for the technology as opposed to putting a sheen over it. We have new tools that allow us to make better looking animation, improvements in character rigs and facial rigs. The characters were rebuilt. We didn't just take the original model of Henry and Sam. We built a new Henry and Sam. We only take what we have to. Let's do a side-by-side -side review. It would stop multiple times just to be like, oh my gosh, just look at that. Things that make like the shirts wrinkle, the muscles deform correctly, facial details add such a layer of richness and life to the character. As someone who wants to play this game again is the thing I am most excited about. The scene at the beginning of the game, that was one that terrified us to remake. When Joel cradles Sarah up to him and you see their cheeks smashed together, the tears streaming down the face, there's a physicality that we were unable to achieve the first time we made this. All the art has been rebuilt from scratch. A great example is in the Boston State House Museum. On the lower floor, there's some back rooms that in the original game were generic offices. Now there's like an art restoration station, there's busts of American colonial figures on the walls. We have a completely new AI core. Encounters will play out in a much more dynamic way. You might play it 10 different times and get 10 different results for how the combat went. All of that at the end of the day is in service of the storytelling. We want to be very faithful to the original experience, to be very true to what fans love about that game, and give them the best version of this game possible. To get the opportunity to do this again with better tools and 10 years of hindsight and knowledge, it's like, wow, that's like a, a dream come true for every artist. We had the original art director of The Last of Us EP, and we had the new director, Sebastian, going in and really taking a look at every single space in the game. First question that we ask ourselves is like, how do you make this better? People think when you're doing next gen, it's just more stuff. The actual art direction on a day-to-day -day basis was more about restraint and balance. You have to keep that focus and emotional goals all the time. One of the themes of the first Last of Us game was the beauty of nature in this very violent world. Taking Pittsburgh, for example, with the capability of the PS5, we are now able to display a very lush environment. We focused a lot on lighting. It drastically improved all of our cutscenes. The quality of them just got so much richer and more realistic. It created more shape and depth to our characters. Who's there? The first time Ellie meets David, she's feeling alone, she's feeling scared. Shifting the color palette slightly to a blue represents her emotional state. The work that our lighting team has done and the effects team and the character modelers, everything really comes together. It's a labor of love all across the board. Every department working on this game loves this world, loves this franchise, loves these characters, and we're just doing everything we can to do right by them, to do right by the fans. We want to play this game too. <laughs> Why didn't we retrofit Dodge into The Last of Us since we had it in The Last of Us Part 2? If you're facing a clicker in The Last of Us Part 1, you really need to keep your distance from that clicker because if it grabs you, it's going to kill you. I think we found a great balance for that in The Last of Us Part 2 playing as Ellie, but it just felt wrong for Joel. Clickers? Go, go! There's a whole set of mechanics that are appropriate for clickers in The Last of Us Part 1 that would kind of be subverted if you could dodge away from them. It would just be a very different feeling game. Easy! Authenticity to the original game drove every decision that we really made. Put your seatbelt on, Ellie. Well, what about the guy? You're in the truck, right? And you see the guy, the hunter, walking towards you. And that rolls right into a combat segment. And it shows a lot of the unique improvements in Part 1. On the original Last of Us, we had to make difficult 
complicated scripting to constantly be unloading enemies, loading in enemies, trying to preserve the illusion of continuity. But because we didn't have that constraint on the PlayStation 5, we can have more enemies all alive at the same time. There's an AI coordinator that's kind of distributing the enemies amongst these positions. So you should be able to play that fight 10 different ways and have the AI respond 10 different ways. The AI systems have all become next generation, right? They're entirely advanced, but the actual gameplay is, is very familiar. The core of, to me, what makes The Last of Us Combat fun is that cat and mouse. Ducking down and moving behind a low cover and popping up from some angle you don't expect. The more realistic art style just grounds you in that experience. It makes it more frightening. It enhances the tension so much and your heart is in your chest the whole time. You're sneaking around these clickers. It's terrific. No! <laughs> 